Okay, my friends, let's do a sound check before we truly get going with this run. So, as always, can everybody hear the commentary? And can you hear the game? Let's do those checks before we uh, launch into anything. Okay, sounds good. That's always the first hurdle. As long as we've got that, then <laughs> then we can get rolling. So, what's up everybody? How's it going? It's Burke, aka Dansquake here, and it has been a very, very long time since I've done something like this. First of all, everybody in the chat, uh, show of hands, has anyone in the chat seen the No Sphere Grid live streams that I did in like 2016, 2017? Was anyone present for those live when they were on Twitch? That's what I want to know. Because that was a very small niche crowd back then. It was literally like 30, 40, 50 people tops, I think. Um, yeah, definitely a, <laughs> a, a different phase of the channel. James straight away with the, with the memberships. Thank you so much, James. Appreciate that. Yeah, I don't think most of you have, have, have been here for those. So hopefully this is going to be fun because it's going to be the first time you're actually going to see me do like a, a true live live stream of uh, a Fire Fantasy 10. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, a bunch of people did watch them later on. So that's really cool. Appreciate that. But this time we're going to do things a little bit differently. Hopefully this time around for people who do want to um, watch these later, hopefully you'll be watching it um, with like a, a preview of the, well, not a preview, but like a little window of live chat uh, where the map is located. So you can see what people have been chatting about and what I'm responding to uh, in this particular session. So yeah, welcome everybody to this series of live streams. Now I released an intro video, basically explaining what I would do here. Um, and... Obviously, I'm going to give a very like abridged version because I don't expect everyone to have watched it and uh, to be up to speed and everything. So I will show you guys and we'll explain what we're doing here. And then we'll just launch straight into it because it's going to be, be a pretty slow start uh, given where we are in the game. And so we'll just see how things go. So it's nice to see the chat nice and busy. Thank you all for, for attending this. I do appreciate it. Hopefully, it's going to be a fun set of streams. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Have not done it. For a while and we have like final fantasy 10 royalty like blitz ace 469 in the chat as well uh, he has a pretty incredible channel that is severely underrated anyone that's watching this or listening should definitely be subscribed to blitz ace 469 he's been around since before i was doing challenges and he's done everything in the book and more so definitely uh, check him out if you're into um serious final fantasy 10 challenge material like stuff that i've never done before so he's an absolute beast so for this challenge though, what are we doing? Now, uh, we started the game here because this challenge concerns the sphere grid itself. And unfortunately, as I've said on multiple occasions in the past, what we don't have is a, a true, what I would call a true randomizer for uh, Final Fantasy X, where like, you know, enemy placements are randomized, enemy stats are randomized, enemy, enemy moves are randomized, all of that kind of stuff. But what we do have is a sphere grid randomizer. Now, I looked into it before, and one of the, the things that kind of put me off about doing a figured randomizer was that if you have experience with the game, it's, and you know what you're doing, it's kind of a, a bit too easy to just kind of exploit it, and sometimes a randomizer can actually play in your favor. So if you get certain moves that you know to be pretty OP very early, then obviously you know the odds of you completely breaking the game are going to be uh, much higher. And so... I feel like it might not be the best idea, but then I thought, why don't we tackle it in a way that could make things potentially a bit more interesting? So I think the first thing we need to do before we get rolling here with these um, with these with this uh, playthrough is actually have a look at the sphere grid and see what the randomizer has thrown up for us. So let's have a look at random titus here. Okay, so straight away. I can already see like there's some um, there's some black magic very close to that. I mean, maybe he just gets Ultima straight off the bat. But even if he did, he doesn't have the MP to use it anyway. So it wouldn't make a difference at this point. But for now, let's have a quick look ahead at what there is uh, on Titus's grid. So we can get a feel for what to expect. What kind of character is Titus going to be? Let's see. His first ability is Nab Gill, which is... Um, I don't think that helpful, but maybe it could be. I don't know. I don't even know how much MP it is. I use it so rarely that um, <laughs> I don't know about that one. Uh, agility is nice. 
Okay, I said Ultima, but he gets a flare. Now, you might think, oh, okay, he's broken the game now, but um, he's got 12 MP. So without a lot of MP, he's not able to exploit um, flare at the moment anyway. Let's see when he's even going to have enough MP to use something like flare. Um, null shock, not particularly useful. Well, it could be, actually, depending on the boss, depending on how tough things go. Now, stat-wise, the, the interesting thing is he's getting a lot of agility early on. This is, uh, this is interesting. And he gets that. Hmm. As of this point, he can already use Flare. That's pretty funny. But he gets to use it once uh, per battle. But that's pretty funny. And then he gets Fire. Okay, fine. <laughs> but um, as we continue to look through here, I mean, in terms of abilities, he's not getting like a ton of them. Flare is obviously very big. Um, I believe the locks are in the same place. It should be the same because stuff like this, this level three and this level four, that's where they were. That's where they're placed in a normal sphere grid. So I'm pretty sure that's um, that's where they should be. And so yeah, what I mentioned was basically the way to kind of make this a bit more interesting is by effectively not allowing them to break any lock uh, lock nodes. So normally, let's say. If you have a grid you don't like, or you have something that's pretty easily accessible, as soon as you start getting like some level 1, level 2, especially level 2 key spheres, you can start to break through and get access to pretty OP abilities. So trying to keep everybody on their own sphere grid and just kind of dealing with whatever abilities and stats we get given on our own grids, I think it's going to definitely keep things more interesting. So that's what we're going to shoot for uh, in this challenge. So Shell is here. That's also interesting. So he's got some... I mean, most of his abilities are white magic and black magic, to be honest. He doesn't have that many, like, he doesn't have any, um, like, sleep buster or armor break or anything like that. Um, Thundaga, okay. So, yeah, not a huge amount of abilities for Titus, and already we basically make it towards the end of his grid. What's at the end? Copycat is at the end of his grid. Okay, interesting. So, I mean, if you take Flare away, I don't think this is a particularly, like, crazy distribution of stuff here. He does get Blizzard, Fire, and Thundaga. So I guess you could say that he covers most of the elements. But other than that, I don't think this is a particularly wild grid here. So it could be interesting for sure. Okay. Is it possible to randomize the starting stats too? I'm not sure. Uh, these are his starting stats. I don't think I've seen that. I mean, you could kind of do it yourself uh, using an editor, but that's not something I've got into. But the stat growth itself is uh, is randomized here because of the sphere grid, obviously. So for the other characters, we'll see them as we get them. Otherwise, we'll spend literally the entire session just on the sphere grid. Uh, but Riku should also be an interesting one. Uh, let's have a look at the chat a bit first. Yeah, so uh, curious how the game will handle the tutorial section. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I'm not too sure. I'm trying to remember. Attack only. Did I... Was I able to still just attack or was I forced to use fire? I don't think I was. So I think if I could just do it with attack only, then surely you should be able to do it with this as well. But what I do have is uh, the far plane editor thing where if we run into any kind of serious issues where a character needs a move in a tutorial or we can't progress then I can basically hack the move back in temporarily and we can get through and continue on. So I think it should be okay. So yeah, that's the that's the situation for Titus and we have Riku. Now, one thing I did notice, obviously I did briefly check once I did the randomizer to make sure it worked. For some reason, the randomizer still gives her like uh, these two activated. Well, I guess she starts with those two anyway. But in this case, she actually starts with Flea. Now, another thing I mentioned was that I'm going to try my best not to run from any encounter. So yes, I did get Flea, uh, but we'll try to basically not use it. So that's what we'll go for. And Focus is the other ability that she has. So Riku doesn't have Steal or Use. And so already that's going to make things a lot more interesting. So we'll have a quick look through hers as well, and then we will get rolling uh, with this run of the game. I mean, I hesitate to, to call it a challenge. It could be very challenging, depending on what, what happens and how things go. Or it could end up being not as challenging as we think. We'll just have to see how it goes. It's mostly designed to just, uh, you know, do some live streams and have some fun with you guys. So don't take it too seriously as a as like a big challenge run. So Null Frost, we're going to have like Null Shock and Null Frost relatively early. 
double cast. Uh, she doesn't have much to double cast anyway, so not really that helpful for now. Um, as you can see, I mean, ability-wise, there's not really that much that's, that's helpful here so far. Very little. So in terms of it giving me a really broken kind of distribution for Tidus and Riku, that definitely doesn't seem to be the case. Other than Flare, it's it's looking pretty good to me, like in terms of it not being too easy. Okay, interesting. If his magic stat is low, I don't think Flare will be super OP. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see someone with a 5 magic stat using Flare. Obviously, for early on, the, the damage constant is so high for Flare, I have to assume it's going to do great damage. But we'll just have to see. Okay, so for now at least, it's looking like it could be a pretty interesting and, uh, and slow start. But we'll just have to see how things go. Let me have a look at the chat. Are you using Aeons or not really? We'll try to avoid using Aeons for sure. I think we can, I think we can manage that. And what happens with the story usage of Steel and Use in Barge Temple in a randomizer? Um... Honestly, I don't remember. I think, did this save start here already or something? I don't quite remember. But yeah, unsure how that exactly works. But yeah, we're going to find out. So when people are asking stuff like, uh, how's it going to work when Riku doesn't have steel or use, we will see. If it becomes uh, something that we can't progress through, then we'll just uh, we'll use an editor to hack those moves in temporarily when we need it. So Titus is stats. So the stat growth itself will be randomized. So the stats that you see here, the, this is what they start with in any kind of no sphere grid, like normal run. But how they're going to look by the time we get towards the end of the game is going to be basically randomized at this point. So I think from here, I guess we we get our first uh, point here. Let's grab this <laughs> nab gill to start, uh, and we'll see how we go from there. It's 30 MP, so I can't even use it for a while anyway. So fine. Ah, yes, my friend Toby Ott in the chat as well. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining, Toby. Hope you're doing well. Okay, I think we can just get going here. I spoke to this guy already. He gave me some potions. Oh, no, this is a reloaded save after my test run. Okay. I think we can get going. Here we go. Would be funny if uh, Tross without Steel and Use ends up becoming like this super difficult boss that we can't beat. And the run ends here. But yes, there's already 250 of you guys. This is insane. So many people at this time. I, I thought this would be a quieter time. It's kind of partly why I want to do it as well. Um, I, I, I don't want these to be too chaotic, I think. Because they're not like events. They're more just sort of just a chill playthrough of the game. Um, I wanted to keep it relatively casual. So this time slot is also good for that. Alongside it just being a lot more convenient for me. And how my life is right now. But yeah, there's almost 260 of you guys already, so do remember to like the stream and the video. We'd we'll definitely appreciate that, and it will help things moving forward. Okay, so... I don't know why... why oh, is this like hard-coded or something? Hmm. We're not going to use these, obviously. Um, I think basically they're kind of left in, they're, they're kind of almost hard coded in, I guess, for those like tutorial battles and stuff. That's kind of interesting. Uh, you guys are saying that the, the game's, the music's a little bit loud. I've turned it down. Let me know if that's working better. How's this? Is this good? Okay. Good stuff. Because it's so quiet on the salvage ship, I, I couldn't quite uh, quite get it. Okay, there we go. Glad we saw it out early. But in terms of this steel and use being available, that I'm not too sure about. Let me see if there's a quick way for me to remove them completely. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure I can remove them, really. Um, yeah, even on, like, Farplane Editor, it looks like they've, they've vanished, but... I don't think they do. Yeah, it seems to be the case. So, yeah, we'll just not use it. We'll ignore uh, Steel and Use for Riku if she doesn't have them. But we'll see how it goes. So, let's just... Um, 
Let's use a focus just to make sure things are working properly when she has an ability she shouldn't have at this stage. So yeah, things seem to be working normally on that front. Okay, let's go. Yeah, not much to do for now, we just have to attack. It's going to be attack only for a little while. Chaz, welcome to the stream. Hope you enjoy yourself here today. Maybe this Riku is a placeholder of different stats than when she joins. I think she joins with the same stats, but in terms of her being a placeholder, maybe? Like, when we get Riku in our party for real, maybe uh, Steel and Use won't be there. We'll see. Kimari approves of this stream. Yeah, I hope everybody approves of this stream by the end. Uh, I don't have a cutscene skipper. Uh, I feel like it, it gives me a chance to kind of check the chat and just hang out. So, well, honestly, I haven't done a run of Final Fantasy X with the cutscenes for quite some time now because I'm I'm doing more like obviously challenge run material. I tend to have cutscene skippers to to speed up things. And well, it keeps the game fresher for me when I do watch the cutscenes. I think that's one way to, that you can burn out of a game. When you play the game so many times, you keep watching the cutscenes over and over, they're going to obviously lose some of their impact. That's why if I ever, even for fun, if I ever speed ran the game, I would do it with like a cutscene disabled mod, and I'd try to do a time for that. Because I feel like speed running the game plus the cutscenes, just watching them over and over again and wishing that they would end so that you could carry on, like that's not a healthy relationship to have with your favourite game. You don't want to do that. Cutscenes are awesome anyway. I agree. Cutscenes only only suck when you get stuck on a on a particular boss. That's the problem. Okay. Let's see. Real deal in the house. I finally have a mod. <laughs> Mods are busy today. I think the the next session I do, I'll try to do it at 1.30. Today is actually uh, my mum's birthday. And so we have something planned a bit later, so I have to wrap up by a certain time. I generally said around 1pm start, but like it's flexible, I'd say, between 1 and 1.30. And so I think next time I'll go for 1.30. Just give people a little more time to, to get in here. So, tired as tech support launch in here. Have you decided on your next Fire Fantasy attack only? Yes, I have, but it's uh, it's still a secret for now. But I'm gonna start working on it hopefully next week. I think um, we'll see. There's just so much going on right now, uh, including this stuff. So I'll try and get it done. The Unilever cut seems brutal if you keep losing. Yes, indeed it is. So um, just in case anyone's wondering, usually on the 24/7 stream, if you guys hang out there. Uh, we generally have a rule about don't post like spoilers for the for the game being streamed. Uh, in this case, not for this. So obviously we can talk about pretty much anything Final Fantasy X related, the story, uh, upcoming bosses, characters, that kind of stuff. So you don't have to worry about spoilers. But if for whatever reason um, you're worried about spoilers for Final Fantasy X during the stream, there's going to be tons of them. So you've been warned. Um. Uh, that's great to hear, Emerus. That's really cool. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, have you thought about how far you want to go with this randomizer? I guess stat max and would just even out the difficulty. Yeah, pretty much. I think how far you can go would be more of a like, if we complete everyone's sphere grid, um, it would be interesting to see who gets which abilities, which ones get left out and that kind of stuff. And then we could potentially, depending on how far, how far we get and how we do, we could try and take on some of the optional difficult bosses of the game using the, the sphere grid stats that we got from this randomizer. So I think um, that's probably how we'll do it. So we are face, facing Tross, but we don't have uh, steal and use it. So normally you'd be able to steal grenades and bombard and stuff and it'd be pretty easy. But this time we're going to have to really grind it out here. So. This might take a while, and we'll probably have to heal um, a bunch of times too, but we'll see. Well, that bit of evasion there definitely helped.
in Final Fantasy and Editor, if you go to character and check on the abilities, you can turn off the preload and stuff. Yeah, I think uh, moving forward we'll do that. I think once I have the full party kind of in there, then we'll then we'll sort it out. Yeah, trust with without grenades. I mean, this battle is so designed for like having uh, steel and use and using those grenades that when you don't have them, it, it turns into a, a much grindier boss. Birch and Hagen in the house. Definitely do appreciate your presence. But I'd appreciate it more if you dropped some Bugenhagen emojis. What about Riku's Overdrive? The reason I'm not using it is I think basically uh, to get to this point, like running some tests and stuff, I turned on the, the thingy, like the supercharge ability. So I think they shouldn't have overdrives at this point. So I'm going to try to do it without overdrives. So uh, I think we'll leave it like that for now. I think with this, it's just best to defend. I don't think we have to do too much here. We'll see. This could drag on a little bit, but like I say, it's going to be a bit of a slow start, especially when you don't have many abilities to play with. Just got to go for it. Shinra emoji when? Um, in terms of, for people who don't know, when it comes to uh, member emojis, you gain access to more of them the more members you have. So obviously YouTube wants to motivate content creators and communities to have as many members as possible. And so let's say if you have 100 members, they give you 10 slots, 120 gives you 11 slots, etc., etc. And until you reach past a certain threshold, uh, you're not allowed to have any more. So that's the, the general deal. So basically the more members we get, the more chance we have of unlocking more emoji slots and maybe getting your favorite emoji into the mix as well. So that's generally how it works. How many members do we have? Good question. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, they fluctuate so much that it's not something I, ac I actively keep track of. Uh, I do know that we peaked to a pretty insane number um, when we did um, the No Surrogate Dark Anima stream in May this year. And that was like, I think we got to like over 300 or something. And then we dropped back down to like 130, 150 kind of range. And since then, I haven't done many like major streams. So I, I have to imagine we're somewhere between 150 and 200. So uh, we'll see. It's definitely, it's definitely not higher than like the, the 300 mark. It's hard to keep track of because, um, especially with membership gifting, they're, they're great like short term, but obviously a lot of people that get gifted memberships they don't continue afterwards and so as a result you kind of it really goes up and down a lot like you get a bunch of gifts come in and the numbers go up by like 20 members 30 members 50 members and then like 32 days later it can of those 50 let's say 45 of them drop out and so you get these massive kind of swings of how many uh, members you have so it's just it's not the kind of thing i want to keep track of constantly I know, I know most YouTubers and content creators say this, but we try not to get too fixated on the on the numbers with this stuff. That's a losing game. But at least Emrys has rejoined as a member, so I appreciate that. Welcome back. What I'm kind of missing, actually, is um, in, in more of my like recent runs, I've had um, the Untitled Project X mod on here. And that, with that, you can basically activate the sensor permanently. So I've, I've been kind of used to just always seeing the sensor working. Uh, but I think we'll go back to old school and just play kind of sensorless here. <laughs> yeah, his name being Random Titus. <laughs> it's it's too long, I think, to be done ordinarily. Like when you sign the Blitz Ball and you put your name in at the start, I think it might be too long. Um, but I think with the randomizer, I've got the website. If anyone's curious and wants to do this themselves, by the way, I do have a link to the randomizer I've used um, in the description. So you can go there and you can download it yourself. It's pretty easy to do, it just especially if you're on the Steam version. It's very easy to work with and be able to you'll be able to play yourselves as well. Cotillionaire in the house. Good to see you. Let's keep going. I think this guy had like, I always forget how much HP he had. It's like 1,800, 2,000, something like that. 2,200 maybe? I don't know. It's in that kind of range. So it's going to take a, a little while here. And I'm trying to play it safe, but I think we did it with that. 
Yeah. So without uh, without grenades, it takes much longer. Tom, thanks for the donation. Appreciate that. Do you have the seed so we can play with your grid? Honestly, I, I'm not sure what that is. I, I that's not a part of like the the Final Fantasy modding scene and stuff that I really understand. Um, the whole like seed stuff. I know speedrunners and stuff make use of it a lot, but it's not really ever been necessary for any run that I've ever done, so I've never researched it. I don't really know how they work. Retro Rixor, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoy the stream. Are all stats, including HP, random? Yeah, uh, the, the growth of stats will be random, so we don't know how much HP they're going to end up with at the moment. <laughs> yeah, the seeds are in a different world entirely. I meant for the randomizer, or could you ex export the grid for us? I don't know how you do that stuff, honestly. Um, how do you export the sphere grid? I think... Mm, I don't know how it could... Maybe I can upload the save file that I started this session with, perhaps. Um, so look out for the description of the videos. If I can do that, then I'd be able to like host the save file. So anyone that's playing on the HD remaster, the PC version, you can just basically put in the same save and uh, play along. So I think the save file is probably the one that I can implement the, the easiest. Sheesh, already over 300 concurrent viewers. Thank you all for joining in this first session. Appreciate it a lot. As I've been saying, these will be uh, once every two weeks, so we're not going to kind of overdo it with the streams. I think it should be a, a good, like, nice little balance as uh, an extra piece of consistent kind of content on the channel. And it's not going to demand too much of your time uh, over the course of a month. This is perfect for binging. Yeah, I mean, in the future... Um, for anyone that wants to re-watch this series or anyone that can't watch the lives, uh, hopefully um, the the versions, like the episodes I'll upload, will be good binge-watching. <laughs> Real does spend a lot of time on the 24 7 stream, but we're grateful for that. <laughs> Ugh, hungry. <laughs> Rock. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it is always kind of funny to see, like, um, character models for blitzers that you know appearing as, like, random Whoa! NPCs right in the world. <laughs> but yeah, of course, you know, part of this whole thing is that as we get more people watching this and hanging out in these, hopefully some portion of you guys will want to, um, you know, still spend some time with the community and hang out in between streams and for that we we of course have the 24 7 stream that you guys are always welcome in and we definitely try to hang out there as much as we can maybe we'll see the can that is true the can remains a mystery we've still not seen it it's like the most important piece of deleted content in Final fantasy 10 history the can so if anyone spots that can let me know if you don't know what i'm talking about i think was it the 14th year anniversary that i played the um like the pre-release version of Final Fantasy X, I think it was the 14th. There. What is your Been name? so many year anniversaries now, I forget which one was which. Miku? But um, really Yeah, we basically understand. looked through, um, <laughs> we looked through like a model viewer, <laughs> and there was like this one random model of like a can, and we were basically saying, where the hell does this can appear in the game? We uh, never see this can. Didn't you say so and earlier? Um, yeah, we couldn't find it. So Everyone thought we were a fiend. If we ever see this can, I think that would be a pretty fun revelation. Uh, we? Oh, we means you. That's got to be deliberate. Um, we means you. Who are you guys anyway? I spent two days looking for the camp. We're out bed. Can't you tell? Oh Wait, my god, there's just too much wit in the chat at the moment. Here, I can't handle this. I don't even know what an out bed is. Where are you from? Can't even Google the American? FFX can. Yeah, that, it's one. Player. It's a Danzgo Eight community niche thing this can situation it's the kind of thing where if i posted about it, no one would know what i'm talking about did you 
hit your head or something? Um, you guys hit me? Oh, right. Damn, first half hour done already. Time flies. So shooting for about um, three hours or so of, uh, of streaming for this first sesh to get the ball rolling. And it'll be a good way for me to check if everything's so I told her everything uh, working. There was to tell about I'm running smoothly. About life there, Blitzball, and Sin's attack. And the can emote sounds like a natural Arnon choice. <laughs> in this light. True. That is true. Honestly, even, even within the Dan's Great community is so niche that there's wonder. still a lot of people that don't know what the can is, but um, we have very limited slots. There's a lot of emojis fighting Did for their I places. Say something so fun. yeah, we'll see. You were near Sin. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Is there an image of the can? I'm not sure, um, but obviously the the, the main way I can say to see it is the the 14th year anniversary. But I don't remember obviously specifically where it was. I don't think I posted a, a screenshot of it or anything because later. Of Sin's toxin. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. There is no Xanarkand anymore. Sin destroyed it a thousand years ago. Not so five fancy race, but how good was the GTA there. 6 trailer? It's finally happening. Yeah. Um, I huh? I heard about the leak and I was like, I'm not going to watch the leaked version. I want to watch the official what? one. And then what do you mean? Uh, Rockstar, I think, did the smart ago. thing. And they just basically uploaded Sin themselves on their own official channel as quickly as possible instead of trying to chase down the leak and ago? shut it down and all that no kind of way. stuff. And yeah, I mean, it, it looks great, but the wait has just been so obscenely long for it that... Um, I don't know, like, it's 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 felt like too long a wait. But interestingly for me, I played um, San Andreas. Oh, wait, I've run out of slots. Sheesh. Yeah, I need to delete some slots. <laughs> this is this is what my Final Fantasy save thing looks like. I've got too many save files here. I need to get rid of some of these. But yeah, I played um, San Andreas and um, GTA V. Like in the last 12 months, I'm generally a bit more up to speed on GTA, so I'm definitely looking forward to to 6. Chance of a GTA 6 Let's Play on the channel, very low. Honestly, very low. It's a big, massive game, takes a very long time. Um, still relatively niche, I would say, um, for, for my community and my audience, so I don't think so. Someone might know who you are, or you might find someone you recognize. Luca? Ah... Uh. Ah, huh. uh, Erica in the chat too. Welcome. Good to see you. Ah, uh, Wordsmith too. Listening in on my way to work. Okay, leave it. Have to a me. good day at work, man. I'll get you to Luca. Promise. <laughs> You'd rather stay here? Uh. -uh. Okay, I'll go tell the others. Wait here. Oh, and one thing. Don't tell anyone you're from Xanarkand, okay? Yevon says it's a holy place. You might upset someone. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I will occasionally take some time to just kind of just watch the cutscenes again. Like I say, it's it's been a long time for me. Weirdly, it's been for Attack only. I think I skipped the cutscenes too. So it's been a good like maybe a couple of years or so since Why I Xanarkand? watched them properly. Some kind of holy place? Yeah, right. I thought. Since when? But yeah, in terms of what Yevon, I'm playing, um, Sin, like off the channel at the moment, it's um, I thought Sin just took it's me Tears to a of the Kingdom. Place. Uh, definitely got sucked into that. Go back in a day or two. And so when I've been having time, I've been trying to but enjoy Tears of the Kingdom. I have maybe like the 30 hours in so far, and I've still got no a lot to way. do, of course. Besaid, Luca, and Kilika was some of my favorite tunes, but most of my man's and is that yeah, it's for me is one of the absolute best. Aha, Laura in the chat as well. The Machen badge. Almost five years as a member now. She's the best. Yeah, it's it's the mod invasion now. You've got to be on your best behavior. You guys, if you want to misbehave, you had your chance in the first half an hour. Uh, most of the mods that have a chance to attend are in the house now. So the fun and games are over.
Um, nah. But yes, uh, when you don't skip cutscenes, it's easy to to kind of forget how long the intro of this game is and cutscene heavy it is. To the extent where I think it's fair to criticize the game for it, it is one thing that for some people who say the game was just too slow to start, too many cutscenes, too much dialogue, I couldn't get into it for like the first two or three hours gameplay wise, then I think that's totally fair. Thankfully, obviously for me, I love those cutscenes, dialogue, world, characters, everything so much that it never really bothered me, but it's definitely a, a, a slow burner for the first two or three hours. Blitzball! You okay? okay? For anyone who hasn't seen hey! it, uh, you need to go onto the shorts part of my channel. I don't upload many shorts, but when I do, I try to make it premium content. And uh, someone made a Blitzball Kid mod where they replaced the, the, the Blitzball literally with a giant blown up version of the Blitzball Kid's head. And they, I've worked it into obviously this scene. It's absolutely hilarious. You've got to see it. <laughs> yeah, Blitzball Kid mod is just the best. What I didn't try to do was play a game of Blitzball with it, like an actual game of Blitzball. I recorded, I think it was um, this cutscene that I did with it and it appears. I'm not sure if it actually appears in like a normal game of Blitzball. If it does, maybe I'll, I'll have to mod that in for the the, the Luca Goers Blitzball episode. I think that'd be funny. I'll never forgive you for letting me know Waka was the same voice actor as Bender. <laughs> yeah, there's some very uh, interesting voice acting crossover here as well. Damn, chat is moving fast now. Post Ghost, appreciate it. Glad you've been enjoying the content for so long and an early happy birthday for next week. Grab this. Yeah, indeed, up to 342 already. It's almost like the community likes Fire Fantasy 10 or something. I don't know. I don't know. Just putting it out there. Yeah, KH Mix is right. He does Marcus Phoenix and Gears of War as well. He's one of those very like versatile comedian Yo. voice actors. Hiya. Try that move one more time. <laughs> I love his loads. Finally. Are there even any chests you don't have memorized at this point? Yes, I do. I'm sure you'll see some of them as I play. I'm sure you guys will remind me that I've missed a chest. <laughs> it's a thing. No, no, it's the other way around. I'm not popular. Fire Fantasy X is popular, and I'm popular because Fire Fantasy X is popular. All the credit goes to Fire Fantasy X and its greatness. What team you say again? What uh, team you say again? I meant, forget that. Uh, I got too uh, close to sin, and my head's all foggy, like. So uh, I don't know where this place is. Or even where I came Everyone's from. here for random Titus. Since toxin got to you, but you're still alive. Praise be to Yemen. All right, back to practice. I'm Waka, coach and captain of the Besaid Oryx, brother. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> what? You hungry? <laughs> okay. He's, he's back always to the hungry, village. this guy. I'll get you something. I think maybe that's the side effect of sin. The the gravity magic it sucks out all the food or something. Makes you vomit. Now there's some I think there's some funny dialogues here. <laughs> but like just seeing them be terrible here is like it's it's funny. You can just kinda of see already. <laughs> It's just funny to me that these guys just play so much Blitzball and they suck so badly still. <laughs> I love it. He's a 17 year old, of course he's hungry all the time. That I thought you kind of grow out of that, but I haven't. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always hungry too. I've got to stop closing my eyes when the ball comes down. <laughs> 
So there's some, th these are some lines here that I'm pretty sure in the LP, like the, the infamous 100% playthrough LP, I don't think I, I got all of these lines. The best players, they can hold their breath like forever. I wish I could do that. And yes, I do have a video on this too. You should watch it. It's like this, I think it's called like the silliest, how do they breathe underwater in Final Fantasy X? And the thumbnail has like the silliest thing I've talked about in Final Fantasy X or something like that. You got to check that out. Letty's... There you go. <laughs> but yeah, we're definitely going to beat the goers. We'll reset if we can't beat the goers. We have to. Hey, I'll admit it. We're not the best blitzers in Spira. To do our best. That's our motto. Get us not, guess it's not enough, though. Here, take this and do your best, yeah. So yeah, they can give you a few little goodies here, which I always appreciated. I think that's the kind of thing that a lot of people, me include, I didn't know about that for, for a while. I didn't talk to them this many times. <laughs> Jerome K94, welcome to the stream. Good to see you here. I felt like I could trust this. Yeah, besides a small so liner, not I much of a talent pool. Hundred percent, but. I mean, yeah. still, it's these guys that must have been playing Blitzball since they were right? kids. The, the fact that you can't like head a so ball, it's just a it doesn't like the talent pool is not that now, that big. But you've got to be able to at least. Long that's like the ago, basics of the basics, yeah. Lot of cities in Spira, big cities with big cities. machines to run them. People played all day and let the machina do the work. And then, well, take a look. Sin came and destroyed the machina cities. And Zanarkand along with him. Yeah, that was about a thousand years ago. Just like you said. If you ask me, sins are punishment for letting things get out of hand. What gets me, though, is we gotta suffer because of what some goofballs did way back when. Yeah, it's true. There was a solid period during the lockdown where this was That's basically important. a food chat. It's just <laughs> That's said, correct. It's, it's still one of the number one topics you know? here, other than it Final Fantasy, just of as Riku said, Waka and Riku couldn't both be lying. Why would they? <laughs> I love that line. Walker man, he's un he's Zanarkand under he's Dave, he's borderline underrated. One, huh? He's great. Hey, I'm not saying that team never existed, yeah? <laughs> but you gotta figure a team living in luxury like that be pretty soft, eh? Pretty I soft, appreciated eh? the fact but at that time, all I could think about was everything that happened to me. All this started. Uh, how do you sin. take your tea? Maybe if I, I find Sin have tea two time, different ways. I can um, go home. There's like the For Turkish now, way, and then there's the until that British time came. way. So I no more when, about where usually with food. When I, was. Um, I have it the Turkish sure, it way, which is plain like black home, tea. But I started to feel better already. Um, one sugar, better. and then Maybe. British style tea is like when I have it more like milk, and uh, again like one sugar. I've tried tea with no sugar. I, I was off sugar in tea for like a year or so, and I just I just could never enjoy it i just i didn't like it it just put me off tea in general and so i kind of just stopped but i went back to one sugar uh coffee i i kind of learned to stop having sugar with and i'm definitely glad about that but the tea i i, I need i need at least hey, one sugar this way. <laughs> yeah, true. The epic battle of uh, Marmite. That was, I definitely remember that. I do not like Marmite, for the record. <laughs> yeah, if you see me running into What's walls and stuff, idea? it's because I'm just pushing a direction looking at the chat and not focusing. Um, okay, let's go. So this is a place where I know there's some chests. Also, what we should do, actually, we should take a break and have a look at Walker's Grid. So, let me have a quick look at chat before I do that. My favorite game before I discovered Final Fantasy X. Good question. Honestly, I think by then I'd probably played Metal Gear Solid. I always forget which one I played first, but it probably was MGS3. Um, and before that, honestly, I wasn't into... It, it was probably Gran Turismo, honestly. I, I loved Gran Turismo as a kid. Before I started to get into more like narrative games, I would say stuff like... Um, yeah, Gran Turismo, Crash Bandicoot, FIFA 2000, stuff like that. Those, those are some of my favorite games. And then basically Metal Gear and Final Fantasy changed everything. 
and uh, I got into a whole different type of game. So let's have a look at Waka Sphere. Let's see what the randomizer has cooked up for him. Ah, uh, okay, he gets cured to start, so he's going the, the monk route. Interesting. That's not bad. And well, he gets a double MP boost, so that's pretty cool. I like that. He's definitely got some ability, so he's, uh, there's no black magic nearby that I can see. He gets Lancet, okay. So he's a, that's pretty good, you know. I'm quite impressed. Because obviously, not only would he be able to cure, but he'll have plenty of MP, and he won't have MP issues, because he'll be able to Lancet it back, okay. And yes, the Bisset theme is just so damn good. It really is. So yeah, he's a he's a he's a blue mage slash white mage at this point. Ah, I was gonna say if this was a plus four magic, that would have been nice because his magic stat is already five higher than Titus's, which is pretty good. But we'll see it. Oh, oh wow. So Waka's looking like the o the OP guy here. Sheesh, that's big. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, true. We're nearly up to 400 viewers, um, and those likes are currently rookie numbers. We've got to pump those numbers up. Should at least be here in about 200, 250, based on these numbers. He, he keeps his Sleep Buster, so I think this is one of the first times that a character kind of keeps an ability they had originally. Obviously, it's a randomizer, and that should mean that characters still get some of the abilities they have anyway. And so I have to assume it's in a different place than it was last time. Uh, but yeah, interesting. I mean, obviously use is a, is a big one here. And protect. Waka's looking like the most useful character so far. That's interesting, okay. So yeah, these, these nodes, for example, we won't be able to get because we have a no uh, lock breaking rule. So even level one, I think we, we won't break them. We'll just uh, leave them. Some good HP in this section of the grid too. Wow. What? <laughs> oh my god. No freaking way. No freaking way. He gets auto life. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I can't believe that. That's That's a move right there. Holy shit. Okay, and, well, basically, coupled with the fact that he gets quite a lot of MP, because obviously Auto Life, I think, costs 97 MP. And he gets these. He's going to have enough MP to cast one, and he's going to have Lancet, so he's going to be able to get it back. Oof. Okay. That's interesting. Hmm. Jimples, thank you for the membership gift. Appreciate that. I will say, um, as we move forward, if we get to a stage where once we have the full party, I would say, once we get to like Moonflow, if it's become the case where even with these restrictions, we still have, um, you know, one character's really especially OP, I'll let you guys pick which party I use. And we'll say that we can't swap. Like we'll lock out certain characters from being used, basically. And so we can add an extra layer of challenge by doing that, potentially. We don't know if it's necessary yet, but I'm, I'm willing to, to consider doing that if it will keep things spicy. So we'll see. Aim. So he keeps his aim. But Waka looking like the one with the most interesting abilities so far of the bunch. Sloga. For me, it's more the fact that he can he can manage with the MP as well. That's really That's really good. And Dark Buster, okay. And Sleep Attack. Wow. Yeah, Waka's very versatile. He's got a little bit of everything. Wow. And he ends with a Water Art. <laughs> After all of that, a Water Art to finish. That's really funny. Okay. Outrage, welcome to the stream. Glad you could catch this one. And welcome Scott from Australia. Thanks for joining us. How is he going to be strength-wise? Honestly, at this stage, I can't bother to kind of calculate because obviously we could spend time totting up all of the, the strength nodes and points and stuff. I don't really know, but it seems to me like he's, his greatest benefit is obviously going to be the usability. And well, later on, auto life. But again, how necessary will it actually be over just tossing a phoenix down? I don't think it'll be super important. 
but um, he definitely has some interesting stuff, so we'll see how it goes with him. Yeah, I could do a, a poll um, in chat to, to see that stuff, but for now, let's not think too far ahead. Let's just uh, make some progress because there's a, there's a lot to do. As a James the MVP gives some more memberships. Thank you, James, and congratulations to everyone who received one. The road to more emojis continues. But at the start of the next session, I will. Um, that's one thing I will do. I'll check how many members we have and how far away we are from like a new emoji slot and that kind of thing. So that's not like super vague. But at the moment, I honestly don't know how many we have. Okay, so there's chest number one here. My potion. Again, we have to see if Waka's gonna have his kind of native ability. I think it was like dark attack. Yeah, okay. So these abilities, they seem to be hard-coded. Again, in the next session, I'll see if I can basically alter this save to remove these abilities so that we don't have to kind of skip over them. But this is an ability he doesn't have in this randomizer, basically. Interesting to see how Kimari turns out. Yeah, we'll, we'll see soon. I'm sure by the end of this session, uh, we've got Kimari and stuff too. And we'll have a look. I do know there's one more chest here, um, but I always forget where it is. I don't think they're super important. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you miss it, but... Ah, Mike is coming in with the five memberships. Thank you. It's going to be very green in this chat at this rate. <laughs> Walker's first hit being an overkill is somewhat telling. It might indeed be that. But yeah, if I do miss any chess, definitely let me know in the chat. Um, it's obviously always a bit more distracting to, to try and play like this, so I can skip over some stuff. But I think there were two here, and this is the second. I think that's it. There we go. Okay. Knowing Walker, he'll cast auto life on enemies for some reason. You know what? We should... Uh, how does it work if you cast auto life on like a zombified enemy or something? Never heard of that. Is there a randomizer mod that can give boss abilities? Unfortunately not. Uh, still, in that sense, the Fire Fantasy X modding scene, like randomizer scene, is still quite primitive. And so that's why uh, we're doing something like this for now, which is just the Sphere Good randomizer, plus some of my own uh, restrictions to make things a bit more fun. But hopefully in the future, I mean, if they find ways to make some much more kind of in-depth randomizers, I'm always happy to have a look at that. Mark, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. What does Titus look like for now? Uh, Titus has Nab Gil, <laughs> which is kind of not that helpful right now. But I guess in the future for buying some stuff from Awaka and whatnot, it could prove interesting. But yeah, uh, Titus's grid is pretty pretty weak, especially now that we've seen Awaka's. Uh, Titus is not that great at all. Zombies removed on death, so auto life works. Yeah, that's that's why I would imagine would be the case. That sounds reasonable to me. Definitely not one I've tried against an enemy, especially. Are the grids fully randomized? Yeah, they're completely randomized. Um, like I said, I can't like I won't constantly stop and show people what the grids look like because then again it will be here all day. But um, we will periodically have a look. See you later, RB08. Thanks for joining us. Got a favor to ask you. You want me on your team, right? Hmm? A major blitz tournament. Damn, yeah, 400 in the chat. That's awesome. I can't see exactly how many likes we have, but it's I know it's so over huge. 200. Sure I can see two dot dot dot. You. So thank you to everyone that's liked the stream so far. You can go back to your old team, right? It'll be fun. What do you say, huh? Come on, come on. Come on. 
Scott Boyd, five gifted memberships. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Dude, our team is gonna rock, eh? Yeah, the Waka's early VA work, just so good. That's why it kind of made me sad in 10-2, when it just wasn't, wasn't at the same level. The only two things that Spira and Xanarkin had in common. Waka's evil last of tries to drown someone as a prank that asked a favor of him. That's just Waka in a nutshell. Great character arc. I don't know. Always liked him. Not when he's being racist slash bigoted, but overall... Born. Once you have his whole, five. his humor in the early the part of the game, and then 13, his arc later on. I don't ago. know. I think Wark is great. Ten years, and we never won a game. Well, after last year's tournament, I quit. Time seemed right. Blitzball team should be randomized as well. Yeah, they should be, but I'm pretty sure they're not. I don't know if there's a way to really do that. You'd kind of have to manually, I think, maybe go in if there's some kind of editor tool so, that can do it. After quitting, I got this new job, yeah? But every time, my mind wandered. I thought about the game. Ten years without a single win will do that. <laughs> mm. Wrecked. My first match last year was my big chance. But something else was on my mind. I couldn't focus. Nice excuse. So yeah, now that I did the um, hey, hey. the Blitzball challenge with... So um, you want to win the it? next tournament? Go out with a bang. It was like basically against the, the All-Stars. It was the OG Aurochs trying to defeat the, so, the best Blitzers goal? in the land. It was definitely okay, a very fun challenge. As long as we play our best. We give it our I own. think like any I team can pretty much be any team if you get the right uh, type no, of RNG. No, 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 no. But it just if gets increasingly more luck reliant. Goal, you say victory. When you play in a blitzball tournament, you play to win. Victory. You're serious? Okay, let's keep going. Dan Byrne with the five memberships. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think by the start, the next stream is going to be a very, very, very green chat. <laughs> ah, the one from the sea. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate be it a lot. Guard. There are fiends on the road today. After surviving your run-in with Sin, it would be a shame if something happened now. And yes, shout out to Cotillionaire as Luzu appears on screen. Who are they? Luzu and Gata. Is she still Crusaders. there? Huh? Crews of what? What? You forgot that too? Hey, sorry. Don't worry about it. I'll help you out. Cool. In return, come tournament time, I'll make sure we take the cup. Cool. About the Crusaders, you can ask them yourself. They got a lodge in a village. <laughs> yeah, she's there. There we go. This time, they got to die on Operation Meehan. I, I think we'll probably do that. You guys have to remind me how to do that. It's been so long. I forgot which one you have to tell him to, so that he dies. Be saved, village. They got any food there? <laughs> we'll get you something over there later. Take a look Tide around. Tide is so first. relatable early on in the story. Archie, Let's welcome see. to the stream. The Crusaders Hope you have some fun today. Yonder. Luzu and Gata are usually there. Hmm. All right. Over here. Huh? What's up? Remember the prayer, right? I didn't know it in the first place, to tell the truth. Man, that's like the basics of the basics. Does he not say the same thing right, regardless of which one you pick there? I always wondered, does that affect anything? Um, how much will you be playing through this mod? Will it be the entire game? Yeah, that's the plan. We're going to do the entire hmm. game, hopefully. Hmm. What does he say if you say, I don't know any prayers? I forgot exactly what it was. It's kind of, it's too little a difference. You must have forgot or something. Let me show you. Yeah, it's not bad. I do wish sometimes there's a bit more of a legitimate difference, like when okay, you get to now, pick stuff like that. To the temple summoner? It's relatively any blitzball player would subtle know that a lot of prayer. Time. It was the blitzball sign for victory. Remember to say Energy Blast, yeah. I'm planning to not use the Aeons, so it's not end of the world if I forget, but I'll try not to forget. But yeah, this theme is just the general Besaid area. 
Love it. Okay. But yeah, in general, um, as I've mentioned, when people are sort of coming and they're wondering what's going on, what's the deal, obviously I'm going to rely on the, the community. You guys uh, can help newcomers understand what the run is and what's going on with it as we move forward. Yeah, it's definitely one area where if it ever gets remade, um, it would be nice to, to have like a bit more expanded options for some of that stuff. It would be nice. <laughs> Maybe Loser got randomized as well and he's not dead. But at least we that's one we do have power over. Items are not randomized, no. Like, the chests and stuff should contain the same stuff that we're used to. I'd like Tyus's run cycle to be less like standing in that place. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that criticism, to be fair. <laughs> fair enough. Is there any update on a Final Fantasy X remake? No, there is not. Despite what you may hear when people try own. to get some clickbait attention on articles, there is no official Final Fantasy X remake. Or ten three, anything like that. Let's just enjoy this masterpiece of a game. Forget about remakes. Forget about X3. Can you show what ability is locked in the middle of tree behind multiple keys? Um, are you talking about like this one bribe yeah for post game grinding that's if we ever need, get that far and do that stuff that's going to be annoying but yeah I think that's the one you're talking about <laughs> rip yeah as I mentioned not using cutscene skipper gives me a chance to just kind of relive some of the, the cutscenes and uh, kind of focus more on the chat as they happen. Ten years have passed since Lord Braska became High <laughs> The way he gets startled here. And finally, we receive a statue for our temple. Oh, what's a High Summoner? <gasps> Shout out to Ben Starr, by the way, going hard for the uh, Fire Fantasy I, fans lady. Yeah, I, I mean, he's a big Fire Fantasy fan uh, himself, toxic. which helps a lot. So it comes from a from an authentic place. And in case anyone missed it, he did come into the 24-7 stream to chat for a couple of hours. It was funny so, um, hearing myself make the same excuse. If you've missed that, you can definitely over. find it on the channel. Funny. I do have a, uh, a recording of it. The summoners are practitioners of a sacred art. And yes, we do have a Clive emoji. Of Yevon. Had to do it. Only a chosen few become summoners, who call forth entities of great power, the Aeons. The Aeons hear our prayers and come down to us. They are the blessing of Yevon. <laughs> Cloyf. So what he meant was that we should respect the voice acting in this game is underrated. Thank something you. Something like that, I figured. I agree. I think it is. I think it, considering it's the first one that they ever voice acted, I really do think they they, they did well. I mean, I think in general that the standard for Final Fantasy voice acting is high. Like, 12 is excellent, I think. Like, 12 is definitely better than 10 overall in terms of the voice acting. That I, w I won't really fight. But um, I always thought 13 was high-quality voice acting. So is 15, so is 16. Like, I don't think they really drop the ball on voice acting. Um, people have their preferences about, like, the original... Uh, well, I guess what used to be the original Japanese dub versus um, versus the English one. But I do think it's it's generally a high quality aspect of these games. I still think they just, um, this game suffered because of the whole, obviously the implementation of trying to fit the English lines into the right spaces um, for the Japanese sub. It just, it, the, the cadence and the pacing gets a bit weird sometimes for some of the characters. Um, and I think that kind of, it's, it's memorably bad sometimes. And that reflects badly on the entire performance, but I, I genuinely think the, the voice acting in this game is uh, is solid. Yeah, with Yuna by my side, being the most famous of them all. Sorry, man. No time for lunch yet. 
Take a nap. You look pushed. Sure. How many members for the loser emoji? <laughs> Honestly, um, not sure we'll ever have a loser emoji. I'm going to be real with you here. You could at least go see how they. We would need like a hundred slots. I don't even know what the it's maximum is um, on YouTube, right. but it's been nearly. He's he's quite far down the list. But it's been nearly. It's been nearly a day already. Yeah, one one thing that we looked at um, a bit more recently, like us. basically behind the scenes, something I was I was working on, for him was now. like I feel like certain characters never suffer from that issue of um Thank you. of certain characters like having to speed up on purpose. Like it feels to me like, for example, um, well, like Waka, for example, or I Lulu. Die? I don't feel like they ever really. Fine, there's not really that many obvious lines where they speak. Yeah quickly like to, to fit into a certain time they feel like they can just kind of speak with the speed that they want to and need to for a line and I don't know why it happens to Tyler so many times maybe it's because he he has so many lines in general that it's more likely for him but I don't know it's it's a bit curious that you don't really get bad voice actor games anymore especially in Square Enix games the industry knows that yeah I mean I agree some people get very particular about voice acting. Like, I've heard it all at this stage when you've been around um, the scene as long as I have. Like, pretty much every game has this weird kind of niche of people that just, like, say the voice acting is trash. Like, literally, tra not even just like, eh, the voice acting wasn't that good. It's like, literally just the voice acting is straight up trash. And there's always that group for everything anyway. But for voice acting especially, sometimes I'm just like, come on, man, that's just... That's ridiculous. Yuna says yes really fast a few times, like I sped up. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, Titus and Yuna are the two that suffer from it the most, but I just don't remember... Um, I just don't remember, like, Aura and Lulu, those guys suffering from the same issue, really. Is something wrong? The summoner hasn't returned from the trial. Eh? Well, apprentice summoner, really. Huh? Huh? There's a room in there called the Cloister of Trials. Beyond is where the apprentice summoner prays. If the prayer is heard, the apprentice becomes a fully fledged summoner. Remember? Remember? Uh, so someone is in there somewhere and they haven't come back out. Right. I got ah, it. Larson, welcome to the stream. Thanks the for joining us. already gone by. Is it particularly dangerous in there? Sometimes, yes. Why don't you go in and help? There's already guardians in there. Besides, it's forbidden. Hey, but what if something happens? What if the summoner dies? The precepts must be obeyed. <laughs> like I care. The precepts must be obeyed. Legendary. 